So, uh, just moving on to uh, this is a relatively short uh, tutorial here. So, we're looking at how to evaluate a live performance, uh, uh, or evaluating a performance in general. Uh, but I'm, I'm largely going to stick to live performance here. Um, just, I mean, I suppose for the main reason that evaluating a recorded performance or a studio performance um, well, considering the length of time artists have to record songs and how to make everything as perfect as possible um, it's very hard to be uh, critical of it now I wanted to kind of put on record here I don't know if it's such a good thing to focus too much on evaluating somebody's performance because um, sometimes we tend to be quite negative about this uh, when you're evaluating a performance which is not it's not why we play music I don't like being critical of people's performance here um, and while I know it does say how to that, that, that the, the learning outcome mentions evaluating a live performance but um, it's very hard to evaluate somebody's performance without highlighting negative sides of people's performance that said of course for junior cycle 30 percent of your exam does go to your practical performance so uh, you will be evaluated your performance will be assessed evaluated and criticized um that, like but you need to be clear that i mean somebody criticizing you is is it, it, it's a learning process so if you you need to find a way to accept this criticism uh for the purpose of educating you for for improving your performance uh just keep that in mind really. we, and criticism particularly when it comes to your junior cert and leaving cert assessment criticism is kept to a minimum uh we're like we're not here to kind of uh, or be already critical of your performance or, or to highlight the bad things but it is important to kind of um, inform people as to why they may not get full marks in an exam or where they can improve in a performance okay so first of all here's your learning outcome 2.10 uh, develop a set of criteria for evaluating a live or recorded performance. Use these criteria to complete an in-depth review of a performance. Very clear. Um, so first of all, again, in these tutorials, I'm not going to actually play a whole heap of these videos. Um, uh, yeah, they are up on our Teams page and on mrmullinsmusicclass.com, so you can play them and access them there, okay? So in class, the first um, uh, example of a live performance we did was John Williams conducting 2001 A Space Odyssey. That's the name of a, a movie uh, that John Williams wrote the soundtrack to. And you will see him in this video conducting the orchestra. I'll just play a second or two of it because there's some kind of talking in this as well. Uh, so I'm going to shoot forward here. Stanley Kubrick's visionary movie Move to say there. Again, please feel free to watch more of that if you if you want yourself on the on the website or on YouTube itself directly. I'm not going to play the whole thing here now. And obviously, that's John Williams conducting a, a like an excellent orchestra. They really sound fantastic. But the next video here that I want to show you is John Williams conducting again. Now, this is not a real video. This is actually um, it's what we call a shred. It is uh, where bad audio has been overdubbed onto the, the the main audio so you're going to hear the same piece of music played badly which i know sounds strange but here we go a little bit here Okay, believe it or not, it's actually quite hard to um, to do that, to put in bad audio. Uh, like the, the, the people who do this actually probably have a fairly good knowledge of how to perform the piece well. But obviously you can hear there, that doesn't sound as good as the first one, okay? But why? It's all very well saying. We spoke about this regularly in class. Like it's not enough to just say this sounds bad or this sounds better than that. You have to be able to explain why. What is it that makes that piece sound bad? Um, bad compared to good. We then looked at Ed Sheeran. Okay, now I'll come back to these reasons in a moment as to why the first piece sounded good and the second piece not so good. We then looked at Ed Sheeran performing perfect. Uh, and again, a live performance. And we just watched him play this. Uh, again, I'll just play a little bit of it, not too much. Oh, our next guest needs is his guitar to sound. Again, I'll skip forward a little bit so we get a good bit of the other. Okay, 
okay? I'm just going to stop that there because you get the idea and most of you know it, okay? Um, and we then looked at, and again, that's obviously a very strong performance. Again, we need to look at the reasons why. Why is it a good performance? But then we looked at another version of it, the same song, okay? And unlike the first version, the John Williams uh, piece, this is another very good performance of Ed Sheeran's Perfect. Played differently. Have a listen. Again, just a, a, a bit of it. Okay, you get the idea there. And again, please feel free on uh, the website, mrmullinsmusicclass.com and on um, our team's page. You can watch all of those or just put it into, into, into Google yourself, okay? So again, that was a second version of Ed Sheeran's Perfect. It's still very good, okay? Just because there are two different performances doesn't mean one's bad and one's good, okay? But what is it that makes it sound good? What criteria should we consider when evaluating a performance? Now, this is where your Sounds Good 2 books come in very handy if you look at page 283 of this, okay? And we did this for prep. Here are some of the things to look at when you're evaluating a performance. And these are the things that will be looked at when your performance is evaluated um, uh, as we approach the end of third year. So uh, first thing is correct notes. That's a very obvious point. Are the notes correct? I mean, you, you will hear if there are wrong notes in a piece, you will hear them. You will, you will know they're the wrong notes. Good rhythmically, like is the rhythm accurate? Is the pattern of the notes correct? Okay. Good tempo. Now, tempo, again, we know is the musical word for speed. Is the speed appropriate? So, for example, let's say you were singing a song and the song was too fast. Are you getting all the words out? Is it a struggle to clearly articulate the words that you're, that you're singing or the lyrics that you're singing? So, a singer, it's very likewise if you're playing a, a wind or a brass instrument. If the tempo is too fast, you may not be able to have enough time to get your breath in between phrases. Use of articulation. Articulation, of course, being how you play the note. So, for example, uh, if you are a if you are a clarinet player, are you overblowing? Are you blowing too hard into the instrument? If you're a violin player, is your bowing smooth or is it uh, not quite? Uh, is, is it a bit too jagged? Uh, then control of the instrument or voice. Now this is a huge one that comes to your junior cert uh, exam. Uh, and certainly in leaving cert, this comes into it as well. How comfortable are you playing the instrument? Uh, do, are you awkward? Are you struggling to accurately play the notes? Or are you comfortable? Are you confident playing notes? So, for example, when we saw Ed Sheeran playing the guitar there and the second guitarist, the classical guitar player, is playing that note, you can see these guys have practiced their instrument. They're very comfortable playing their instrument. And then the overall style of your piece. That's a little bit vague, okay? Uh, the overall style, for example, Ed Sheeran's a pop song, but the second version is more kind of a classical guitar style. And then you'll be marked on, like, so for example, in the Ed Sheeran performance, was it consistently good? Was it good but some mistakes? Or what could, could it be improved? Now, look, when you're going through YouTube, it's very, very hard to find. Pe people tend not to put up stuff that they haven't done perfectly. So this can be a problem if you're trying to start research stuff online. But again, it, 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 it is there. So moving along there, so have a look at an example here. Um, this is a, a drummer. I want you to examine, uh, evaluate the drummer's performance in this piece and have a look at it here and see what you think.
Okay, I'm just going to pause there. Okay, there's another example of that. Okay, so what was it about that drummer's performance? Now, let, I mean, first of all, it's very easy for us to say, well, he was way too loud when he came in there. Uh, it really seemed like the drum beat didn't actually suit the song. But I would also argue there that, like, well, actually, if you were in the room there, the sound balance might have been a little bit better. It might have been a little bit clearer than that. Um, so let's kind of evaluate it there. Correct notes. Well, you know, you quite possibly they were the correct notes. They, they, that could have been the music he was told to play. So again, an examiner will look at the sheet music, although that won't happen in your junior cert exam. The examiner or an assessor might look at your sheet music and compare what the drummer's playing compared to what's on the page. And if, if the notes are accurate, well, then he's played it accurately. Good rhythmically. It did sound like it was good rhythmically. Okay, good tempo. You know, probably, like the tempo didn't actually seem to be overly fast. What I would say is use of dynamics, no, could definitely be improved there. What we're hearing, dynamics, of course, are the volume you play at. Forte, mezzo forte, piano, okay? It sounds to me like that song was generally quite soft and should be played at piano, maybe mezzo piano, but he came in really, really, really loud and it was out of uh, kilter with the rest of the piece. So poor choice of dynamics there, so it could, could definitely be improved there. Use of articulation on drums, uh, again, it's very difficult to articulate well on drums. Normally you hit the drum, it either makes a sound or it doesn't make a sound, but you could see there, because he was using, uh, he was actually using electronic drums there, which actually makes it even harder to articulate well. But I just think he was he was hitting those drums way too hard. But articulation doesn't come into too much on drums. And then control of instrument or voice. So he was very much in control of the drum kit there. Absolutely very much in control of the drum kit. Uh, he can clearly play drums. You can see what he's doing is very, very difficult to do, but he did it well. Okay, so he was in control of it. But the, And then overall style. Again, I don't think the overall style of what he played suited that song. Okay, so I, I think that could be improved there. So it's very easy to look at that performance there and think, God, that was awful. But it wasn't. His notes were correct. He was good rhythmically. The tempo was good. The use of dynamics could be improved. Use of artic articulation, not really relevant in drums. That's more relevant in a uh, brass and wind instrument. Control of instrument of voice was good, okay? Uh, possibly some mistakes you could hear there. An overall style, though, could be improved. But you can't say that that was a disaster of a performance because there was only a few things and a good um, assessor or examiner will say, okay, I liked your performance, fix this, and it becomes a really, really good performance, okay? So there we go. Uh, I don't think I have another example there because I think we're running out of time with this, yeah. Again, this comes back to this point I made earlier on. Should we actually evaluate live performance? In my opinion, I, I, I'm loath to do it. I don't like critiquing uh, live performance because I think music should be played. It should be enjoyed. We shouldn't uh, We shouldn't be overly critical of people playing music. Um, page 283 from your Sounds Good 2. That was the prep we did. Uh, I'm just going to leave you with this one. This is one other one to look at here. I'm not going to play too much of this, but have a look at this. And I want you to look at the saxophone player and the piano player here. I'm going to shoot on a little bit there. Let me shoot to here. And again, very easy to look at that and say, God, that saxophone player is awful. But actually, in a case like this, it's quite possible that this keyboard player here has accidentally left what he calls his transpose button on. Because if you isolate the sax playing there, the sax playing is not actually all that bad, but they're in different keys. We don't quite know who's to blame here. But again, if you look at all your criteria, if you evaluate the, the, the keyboard player, it appears the keyboard player is playing very good. He's playing correct notes, good rhythm, good tempo, good use of dynamics, use of articulation, control of the instrument or voice, uh, overall style. But it's quite possible that that keyboard player is playing in the wrong key. So he's not in control of the instrument or voice. We all assume that it's the sax player playing the wrong key, but we don't know. Now, however, you would imagine the sax player would have spotted it at some point there. But anyway, we're about to run out of time with the tutorial. I only get 15 minutes with you here, but we'll do this more in class. Okay, so there you go, guys. Well done. Any questions, get in touch, email me, let me know. Okay, see you now.